My name is Polly Murray, and my field of concentration has been human rights. In a society dominated by the ideas that blacks were inferior to whites and women were inferior to men. Polly was a writer, a lawyer, a priest, a poet. Polly Murray was not just an amazing lawyer or a badass feminist, but also a queer and non-binary person. We first heard about Polly Murray from Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg when we were making documentary RBG. And when we started looking into Polly's background, we were just flabbergasted. Any innovative idea to change the world for the better, Polly seemed to be thinking of it like 10 or 15 years before it occurred to anybody else. Polly had definite ideas, sometimes ideas other people disagreed with. Polly was way ahead of the times. I chose for my senior paper, should Plessy versus Ferguson be overruled? My little argument went to the Supreme Court. I was floored that I'd never heard of Polly Murray and that I knew most people had not heard of Polly. So our approach was to not just find all of the accolades, but to really try to get at Polly's personality. Amazingly, her production assistant, Amira Williams, came across drafts of an autobiography that Polly was working on. A close friend of Polly's was uh, visually impaired. And so uh, to get thoughts from this partially blind friend, Polly had done 30 or 40 hours of tape. So we had this autobiography, which was so beautiful. And then we had this gift of Polly reading it in their own voice. This is Chapter one, page one of uh, an autobiography in manuscript. Betsy West and Julie Cohen said to me, we have a lot of audio, but we're not sure how to tell the story visually because there aren't many images of these amazing stories that Polly is telling. And I come from a, a background of, a, of an artist. I do collage art and I said, wait a minute, we can build our own visual language? And that kind of excited me because we can really be creative with making it an experience. As a cinematographer, knowing that this film was heavily based on archival material, I had really the conflict of how can I bring any mood to the visuals that would tie things together. And for me, there was like this whole idea of hearing stories of people from the present time connecting to Polly in the past. I went and read what I hadn't read, and then I realized, oh my God. Petersburg bus incident, March 1940. I did not start out to contest segregation statutes. There was just nothing you could do but fight back. Polly Murray was the kind of person who saw an injustice and could not help trying to do something about it. The scene where Polly Murray is arrested on a bus for not giving up her seat to a white person, there are no images of Polly Murray being arrested on that bus. It just doesn't exist. There was no movement at the time when Polly was refusing to move to the back of the bus. Polly was acting alone, but that did not stop Polly. This was 15 years before Rosa Parks refused to take her seat in the back of the bus. So the challenge was we had this audio of Polly telling the story of the bus, but what do we see? What is Polly Murray's point of view? And what if we could be on that bus? My friend and I were traveling from New York down to Durham to visit my two aunts for Easter. We found this old promotional video from Greyhound that had just a whole journey on the Greyhound bus. And so we approached the scene that way of showing passengers, showing rural backgrounds because of where Polly was traveling. We wanted it to play like a scene so that you feel like you're on the bus, even though you never saw the arrest, you never saw Polly Murray, but hopefully you felt it happen. I maintain that the, the tool of teachers, lawyers, and ministers is the same thing, words, communication. Julie 
stumbled upon a videotape at the Schlesinger Library. And even though the quality was degraded, we were so excited. It was very much our goal for viewers to understand not only Polly's accomplishments, but really kind of feel Polly as a human being. I think that having the audio tapes, the videotapes, allowed us to present Polly as a real person. And we really tried to lean into who was Polly. Sit down. Lie down. Lie down. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> he has to be in everything. In fiction, there's a certain level of hyperbole that you could actually add to the music. Whereas in documentaries, everything has to have an element of truth to it. So the music has to support that as well. I always think about what piece of the story, what piece of the environment can I bring into the score? And in this case, it was a typewriter. And I use it as a percussive element in the background to move the music forward, but also feel very organic to who Polly was. I think we're in a time of very radical change. I do think that we're going through a time of reconsidering our history, and that really connected us to Polly's story. This story kind of allows you not only to learn about this magnificent figure in American history, but also maybe to rethink the way we think about American history in a broader sense. Polly Murray is the perfect example of a person who should actually be a household name, who should be included in our textbooks, but isn't. And it's not like Polly Murray is missing and then the story is complete. There are so many other people who have made such great contributions who we should also be including. When we were making this film, I was always considering the person who was struggling with something that Polly struggled with so that they could understand the fight may be different, the language may be different, but this isn't new. And Polly Murray is a person that changed the world. I'm hoping that as people watch this film, they'll really get a chance to have pride in what Polly did, but at the same time, ask themselves, how can I do better? We learned so much in making this film. We wanted to have Polly's compelling story out there and people to be fascinated by this person. We think of this film as the beginning of a conversation. Let's like delve in and start learning. If this country is to survive, we must live together in harmony.